So where does Colby Covington go next? It, it's a it's a very interesting spot, and Colby knows it. Dana was asked at the press conference post fight about Colby versus Dustin. Now that reporter did a great job because Colby, who got the final word of the evening, that's the final thing that he said, makes all the sense in the world. I personally don't love the idea of Dustin, a 45 pounder who became a 55 pounder, going up yet another weight class and taking on the absolute best guy. I don't personally love that. But Dustin Poirier does extremely difficult things all the time. But here's what Dana said. Here's what I want to talk to you about. Dana said, where does it go? Or he said, for what? Something along those lines. Oh, they got a personal growth. What's this about? How does it affect the vision? He laid out a nobody asked a follow-up question, but I feel like I could answer that. Where does it go? If Dustin Poirier beats Colby Covington, Dustin Poirier goes and fights for the world championship. I don't think there's anybody at 170 pounds that can beat Colby that does not become a number one contender. I think the same thing is, is true with Shemaev. You got two guys that all you got to do is beat one of them. You will be fighting for a title, or at least you're in that discussion. You were in that absolute final discussion. Colby Covington, Kamara Usman, I know I say this a lot, guys. I know I'm getting redundant. They have proved that they have pulled themselves away from the pack. Colby can't get back to him. So I feel as though I can answer Dana's question. What's this about? Well, for Dustin, it's the number one contender. What's it about for Colby? Well, you, Colby's in a tough spot. Colby's the second best guy in the world. He's the number one ranked fighter in the world. He's beaten everybody in the world, not named Kamar Usman. He gave Kamar Usman the two hardest fights of his life, according to Kamar Usman, but he can't get back. Well, then what's next for Colby? Of course, it's going to be a main event. Of course, he's a big deal. He just sold out Madison Square Garden, and then he followed that up by selling out T-Mobile. Colby's going to do his part. But if he can't reach his childhood dream of being a world champion, then what are we doing to him? And it should be our job as a community to have a suggestion. Colby put his forward a week ago. He said, I'm the number one contender. Go look at the ranking. It says number one. So I'm going to take that golden ticket. I'm going to use it against you, Israel Adesanya. I love that storyline. It's never been done. It's never been put that way. I'm the number one contender. I get a title shot next. Here's where I'm going to use it. I get that we're having a little bit of fun, but it's what Colby attempted to do. It was a very smart move. Now, when that got pushed back on, he quickly pivoted. But you're dealing with a pro who's listening and paying attention. I don't hate that idea. I don't think he could walk right in at 185 pounds. And I think when Dana dismissed that and said, hey, look, if you don't win your belt here, you don't get to go up for a belt there. I think I think everything's fair. However, I do believe Colby at 185 pounds with one win does become the number one guy that can go and fight on Asanya. But somebody else has to tell him that. That's all Colby's looking for. Tell me. Give me some marching orders. It looks like right now I already had my big opportunity. You're not going to give me that back or I got to run out the career or the reign of Kamara Usman, that's a hard spot, so I'm going to keep doing really big things. And he didn't call off somebody easy. He called out Dustin Dan Poirier. He called out a champion of the world. That's not an easy call out. My good. My goodness. But even if we're not going to go in that direction, and we do not need to push Dustin into that, no matter what comes out of Colby's mouth. We don't have to push Dustin into anything. He's not a 170-pounder yet. Give him a minute. We've asked him point blank, and he's told the world point blank. I haven't decided yet. Give Dustin a minute. But let's do put the focus on Colby. What is he going to do next? Do next? It's got to be something big. And Colby's in an interesting spot. You want to know an awesome fight for Colby Covington? An awesome fight? It's Chemayev or Burns. But since Chemayev and Burns are fighting each other, one of them we believe is going to move on and fight for the championship, but now the other one's coming off a loss. Colby's not going to be booked with a guy who's coming off a loss. And I only bring that to you because those are some great options for Colby. I think Colby's probably going to have to start looking towards Blahal Muhammad, uh, for, towards Vincenzo Luque. And I just don't think right now that's going to interest him. It's very hard, right? But what goes up must come down. When you sell out Madison Square Garden, when you sell out T-Mobile back-to-back three months apart, when you sell out weigh-ins, when you pack press conferences, right? It's, it's one of those things where it is going to have to be the, the right opponent. But listening to Covington himself over the last eight days, he's thrown out four names. And I don't see anybody meeting him in the middle. I don't see you, the audience, get behind anything. I don't see the pundits and the headlines get behind anything. What more do you want from Colby? He's willing to fight absolute killers to the point. Dustin Poirier? You know what a hard night that would be? Dustin Poirier is an awesome fighter. Israel Adesanya? Do you know what a hard night that would be? Colby Covington is looking for something really hard to do. 
but he's trying to operate within the, the, these confines that he can't have what he wants, that he's earned. He's the number one contender. He's the number one ranked guy, but he doesn't get a fight for the belt. Okay, what, guys, I'm asking you for help right now. I, I'm getting very frustrated with hearing Colby having a very open mind. I'm getting very frustrated with watching Colby go out and kick ass. I'm frustrated that Colby just beat a BMF champion, but he is not the BMF champion. Put that real night right next to the one that Colby Covington was interim champion, never lost, and woke up one day and wasn't the interim champion. I'm getting very frustrated with this. He's reaching out. He's asking you guys, latch on to an idea, steer me in a direction. That seems fair. He doesn't want anything easy. He's not looking for a night off. Called out two guys. They're both world champions. They're both going to be in the Hall of Fame. And the fight that does make the most sense for Colby, you know, sense, if it makes dollars, it makes sense, big thing, big draw, all that stuff that we don't like to talk about. But in fairness, it's already booked. It's Jemayev and Burns. Either one of those guys versus Covington is a very fascinating matchup. Very fascinating things would be on the line. I think if you beat Jemayev, you're fighting for the belt. I think the fans are just going to get behind you and push you in that direction. I think if you get the jump on Colby, you're going to be going and fighting for the belt. So there's some real opportunity there at 170 pounds, but the players are all booked. You then got Vincenzo Luque, who's got the most beautiful record. Uh, he's the Benny Darouche. He's the Islam Makhlchev on, of 170 pounds against the fastest rising star, Lohal Muhammad. Nobody a year ago to where they are now has done Sean Strickland and Lohal Muhammad. Those are the two MVPs in, in, in terms of who was in the mailroom and who's now in the executive's office. So what do you do? Everybody's booked. Colby's willing to leave the weight class. He's willing to call out guys from a different weight class. Colby's doing everything right, but everywhere that he goes, we keep shutting a door in his face. We keep on telling him no. What more do you want from him to do? He's willing to fight at 170. He's willing to take on 55 pounds. He's willing to go up at 85. What more do you want him to do? Every idea Colby has can't be a bad idea. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. So if you're in the category of hearing everything that he says, and just because Colby said it, you're shutting it down, you're being a dick, and you're not being fair, and you're mistreating a guy who serves you, the audience, very well, and is willing to do some very heavy lifting, and all he's looking to do is keep his spot, which he has earned as a number one contender, and this is the main event. You don't want a title fight where he had his opportunity, man, I get it. That's Colby talking, I get it. He's a number one contender. He's not less than a main event. He's the winner of his last fight, which was a main event. He stays at main event. That's all he's looking to do. You help me with the next piece of the story.